Kimby Bay lies on the north coast of New Britain Island. It's a place not to be missed. The diving in Kimby Bay is typified by seamounts scattered throughout the bay. Some just break surface. Others rise from the seabed to just a few metres below surface. They appear in the crystal clear waters of the bay like underwater fairy tale castles. All are festooned with pristine hard and soft corals and populated by thousands of tiny colourful reef fish. One survey of the bay identified an astonishing 860 species of fish and almost 350 different types of stony corals, as well as masses of soft corals, gorgonian fans and black corals. The sloping sides and tops of the coral bommies scattered through the bay are crowned with luxuriant growths of corals and sponges. Huge but delicate gorgonian fans bend gently in the flow of the current. A sponge spawns, expelling millions of eggs into the plankton. And forests of pink sea whips are the signature of the bay. One dive journalist described Kimby Bay as the enchanted undersea garden of Papua New Guinea. It's hard to disagree. In the very heart of the bay lies Walindi Plantation. As well as its own custom fleet of dive boats, because of the facilities that it offers, Walindi is also used as a base for liverboard dive boats cruising in the area. Strange macro creatures don't only live under the water. These mudskippers live on the rocks in the channel into Walindi. Restorf Island is a favourite both for the day boats from Walindi and as an anchorage for liverboards passing through the bay. It's a magical macro spot. Sea eagles perch over shallow, warm, clear waters that are like a tropical marine aquarium, crammed with diverse and colourful fishes. Nervous blennies pick delicately at the sand for food, their big eyes always alert to danger. The twin spots on the crab-eyed goby and its jerky backward and forward movements are thought to confuse predators into thinking that it's not just a defenseless small fish. In an area where lionfish hunt, every trick is needed. tentacles of the sea cucumber ceaselessly shovel gravel and sand into its mouth, from which it extracts every morsel of food, 
before passing the waste from the rear end of its long corrugated body. Nudibranchs graze on the corals. Multicolored clusters of Christmas tree worms filter tiny morsels from the water column, as do larger but still delicate fan worms. A lizard fish lies motionless, almost buried in the sand, only its eyes roaming, waiting for the chance to dart up in ambush when a fish passes over it. The stonefish isn't quite as agile. It too remains totally still, but waits for its prey to stray close enough to be engulfed in its massively extendable mouth. In the Second World War, Kimbi Bay didn't miss out on its share of the action. Recently discovered by Walindi's dive crew, an intact Japanese Zero that had been lost for almost 60 years lies on the shallow sea floor. Not far from the reefs, it's a reminder of how destructive man can be. The ultimate airborne killing machine of its time. Thanks to the fact that the bay has never been seriously commercially fished, the shark population is also healthy and active. Several species of shark are regular visitors to the outer reefs and seamounts. And sometimes, Kimbi Bay has visitors of an unexpected kind. Pods of orcas are regularly spotted cruising through the bay. <laughs> <laughs> 